Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. Christ Legends and Other Stories. By Selma Lager Luff. The first story in the collection Christ Legends and Other Stories is titled Holy Night and is the only one that is realistic in the entire book. The novel begins with a first-person narration by the author, who recalls her grandmother's death when she was just five years old. It was one of the stories that the author grew up listening to from his grandmother. That is why Selma felt compelled to tell the world about her wonderful experience. The story begins with a man searching from house to house in the dark for a source of light. He did it to keep his newborn son warm after his wife gave birth to him. Late at night, everyone was fast asleep and no one unlocked the door to let the stranger in. Walking for quite some time, he was a bright spot in the landscape. He speculated that it might be a fire of some sort. Upon closer inspection, he saw that the light was, in fact, on fire. A shepherd was tending to his flock in the open pasture. In contrast to the gentle and generous shepherd, he was the exact opposite. His demeanor was condescending to everyone he encountered. The shepherd's dogs attacked the man hunting for fire, but he was unable to feel their bites. It moved aside on its own accord after the shepherd assaulted him with his staff. It piqued the shepherd's interest, but he didn't want to interact with the man, so he decided to make things right by giving him fire. When he turned to face the flames, all he saw were ashes and embers. The man put the embers in his raincoat and walked away. The shepherd was taken aback by a night in which dog bites were not painful, fire was ineffective, and sticks were unable to harm him. In order to see what would happen next, the shepherd followed the man. The walls of a cave were all the shepherd could see when they arrived at the man's home. There was a mother and her newborn baby laying on the ground. Child comforted shepherd gave him fleece to keep warm he felt sad for the child. When he handed it to the toddler, his eyes widened and he saw a variety of possibilities. They were commemorating the birth of the Messiah, who ill atoned for the world's sins. Everything moved the shepherd to tears, and he bowed his head in prayer and praise to God. The Emperor's Vision Short Story Number 2 An account of the beginnings of Christianity is used as a basis for this film. Augustus was the emperor of Tome at the time. Augustus intended to confirm his choice to build the temple on the Holy Roman Hill after the senators suggested it, and he wanted to do it by offering a sacrifice. They found a prophet named Sybil when they got to the top. She was preoccupied by a vision of the birth of Jesus Christ that she had had. Augustus recognized that God had been born. They shall pray to him on a hill, he determined. A sanctuary was built for the baby instead of an altar in the temple. Arachele, the divine altar, will be its name. The Wise Men's Well. Third in a series of stories. Walking about Judea as a character named Draft. To dry it out, she arrived at the well. Three horsemen approached her, and she wanted to tell them the legend of the well. In the past, there were three wise men who lived in poverty. They observed a bright star one night and believed that a new monarch had been born. They hoped the child's father was wealthy and would reward them for informing him of this information. In a cave, they found a small child who had been brought there by the star. At first they thought the cave was an error and returned, only to find that the star was vanished. They soon understood that what they had done was a transgression against God and they resolved to return to the cave. The only difficulty was that they couldn't do it without the star. They'd been looking for the cave for quite some time but couldn't seem to locate it. They found their way back to the cave after seeing a star in the well's depths as they approached. God made a decision to reward them for their good deeds. As time went on, the old beggar, the sick man, and the black man all improved. As soon as the strangers inquired drought whether or not they had repaid the well, she fled since she recognized she was speaking with the wise guy. When she saw the wise man filling up the well of life with holy water, she didn't want to look. Bethlehem's Children The account of Jesus' childhood is told in this book's fourth story. For as long as I can remember I've been amazed by what he was able to do. For the sake of the bees, he caught them and returned them to their hive, and for the flowers, he prevented them from being damaged by the rain. When a youngster wandered by, a soldier stationed himself nearby to maintain watch. He instantly recalled a prophecy predicting a millennium-long period of peace. That didn't sit well with the soldier because it meant that he wouldn't be needed anymore. After looking at the boy for a while, his thoughts turned to the prophecy more and more. The heat was awful one day while the sun was blazing. The soldier's shield was making him sweat profusely, and he feared for his life. When the child saw the soldier struggling, he offered him a few drops of water so that he could rehydrate himself as well. The soldier thought the boy had given him a lot of water. No thanks were offered for his assistance by a youngster. While this was going on, kindly Herod decided to kill all of the boys. 
His greatest fear was the fulfillment of a prophecy that predicted the birth of an entirely new monarch. His men then slaughtered all the mothers and children he summoned to the castle. In spite of the disrespectful soldier standing right next to her, Mary was able to flee and call for help in time. A bee stung him in the eye as he refused to spare their lives. To avoid giving up, he went after them, believing that if he caught them, they'd give him the promotion he craved. But if he approached them, they would flee. This happened once. He discovered them while they were in a cave sleeping. When he was about to stab the child, a bee flew into his head and swarmed around him. The soldier began reflecting on how the youngster had protected him from the heat. He fought with himself till he didn't kiss the child's feet and kneel in front of him. The Flight into Egypt An old, towering palm is the subject of the fifth short story in the series As long as Judea does not receive a king who is greater than Salomon, the palm tree will flourish. A person traveling across a desert, according to the palm of one's hand, will almost certainly meet their death. For his parents' sake, a young man went out to buy dates right then and there. It was only when he ordered the palm to bend down that she knew it was time to die since a king had arrived. In the Temple Short Story Number 6 and last, in the book, an account of his first appearance in temple and the reasons for his visit is given in this section. When Jesus was born, his parents, Mary and Joseph, feared that he would wish to live in the temple for the rest of his life. More than anything else, it was preordained for him to do so. All of Jesus' miracles were forgotten by the time he was five years old since he was just like the other kids. He was not awed by the temple, despite the circumstances. A trumpet called the voice of the world leaders was all that attracted him. When all of the individuals are under one person's wing, they can play the trumpet. His attention was drawn to an old and weathered sword. Atop the bridge leading to paradise, it was erected. Only the righteous could cross the gap between the two poles. The following day, Jesus decided to pay a visit to Jerusalem's temple complex before continuing on to Nazareth. Because he didn't know he had it, he didn't want to show it off. He just wanted to aid those who were in desperate need of it. Jesus is able to accomplish all of the things he was awed by. The trumper sounded, he crossed the bridge, and he strolled between the poles without a sound. There were three wise men who were questioning Jesus when Mary and Joseph went to find him. Mary broke down and sobbed. She was fully cognizant of the fact that he was no longer hers. From that moment on, his life was devoted to pursuing justice, and he began to show his affection for others less fortunate. Because that was the point at which his boyhood came to an end, this was a critical juncture in his life. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.